Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study. In this series of Bible studies, we'll be taking a closer look at the Bible's evidence for the completion of the prolonged Judgment Day and the end of the world occurring in the year 2033. And now here's your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. Hello and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible study that is taking a look at the biblical evidence for the end in the year 2033. This is study number 45. And I'm going to begin by reading a couple of verses in the Epistle of Jude. You can find Jude right before Revelation. It's a one-chapter book. And in Jude, verse 14, it says, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And uh, I'll stop there. So, um, here we find that Jude, who the Lord moved, this man named Jude, to um, write this epistle of Jude, and, and God inspired him. And, and so he is telling us of what Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, in, in saying that the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment and, and so on. And we wonder, well, how does how, how did Jude know what a man who lived thousands of years before him? Again, remember, Enoch was born in the year of 7106, 7,000 plus years before the birth of Christ. How did Jude, who would be writing in the first century A.D., he, he's even further away. Um, how, how did he know what Enoch prophesied? And, you know, there's, there's um, an apocrypha book out there called Enoch. Forget that. Forget that. that nothing to do with the Bible. The Bible, and only the Bible, is the Holy Word of God. Genesis through Revelation, 66 books. Forget, don't even consider when somebody um, wants to quote um, anything from an apocrypha. Forget it. Forget it. it. It has no relationship whatsoever to the Bible or to truth. It is not the Word of God. It, it is like the Book of Mormon. It, it is um, like any other religious book that's out there that's not the Bible. It's a waste of time. It's an absolute waste of time. And, 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 and so, no, Enoch or, or Jude quoting Enoch's prophesying, it, it, it's not because there was some writing somewhere. It, it's because God moved Jude to write it down. God gave Jude this information and and moved in him to um again put pen to paper so that um it would become part of the word of god all scripture is given by inspiration of god the word inspiration means god breathed jude the man had no idea what enoch prophesied but but God, eternal God, who is God from everlasting to everlasting, he knows exactly what Enoch prophesied, and God revealed it to Jude. Who knows how? Doesn't matter. The Lord revealed it and pressed it upon him, so he had to write it, and he wrote the truth. And he wrote the truth. This is absolute truth. It is exactly what Enoch prophesied long ago, and uh, and uh, it it is um, faithful and true, like all Scripture, and it it's very curious too. It's very curious that a man 
who lived again over 7,000 years before the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The, 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 the Messiah had not yet entered into the world. And, and yet he prophesied, and the thing that Enoch prophesied way back uh, thousands and thousands of years, that thing that he prophesied um, was also inspired by God as the Lord is uh, revealing in here. Only God, uh, in, and this is what makes it curious and, and so interesting, only God did not um, have it written down in the Old Testament. We read about Enoch in Genesis chapter 5, no mention of this, hardly any thing about the life of Enoch. The, the big thing was he was born, and then he walked with God, and he's translated. That, that's, you know, all that we were told from Genesis 5 and Hebrews 11. Um, remember, I'll, I'll go over to Hebrews 11. That's not too far away. Hebrews 11, verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He pleased God. And, and, and so one of the things that pleased the Lord concerning Enoch was the fact that he was telling people about the end of the world. He was telling people about Christ coming with ten thousands of his saints and and there's no way of getting around that 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 has um, that's a message has everything to do with the end of the world. Uh, for instance, go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy thirty three, and we read in verse two, and he said, Jehovah came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. So Jehovah came from Sinai, and Sinai identifies with the giving of the law. And, and uh, you know, um, I don't want to get too much into this, but this relates to God bringing judgment through the revelation of the Scripture. It, it's the Word. The law is the Word. Um, it, it's the Bible that is judging in this last day, in this prolonged judgment day period. And so Jehovah came from Sinai, from where the law is given. He shined forth unto Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. They, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. To sit at the feet of Christ. Remember Mary in, um, I think it was Luke 10, what, at a time uh, when um, her sister Martha was cumbered about with much serving because of so many guests that had come to their house, and Martha's running around trying to be a good hostess, and can I get you anything else? Can I take that dish? And, and she's running around, and, and then she sees Mary. She sees Mary sitting at the feet of Christ, listening to his words. And she comes to the Lord, and she says, Lord, uh, bid my sister to help me. And, and Jesus said that um, th there's one thing, and, and Mary has chosen that good part, that, that, and he would not take it away from her. That is, sitting at the feet of Christ, listening to his word, is the most important thing uh, far more important than uh, earthly matters, whether whether it be um, uh, you know taking care of guests or or jobs or 
um, whatever you can think of in this world, the most important thing, the number one thing is God. It's God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other mundane matters of life, God will take care of. He'll feed you. He'll clothe you according to his perfect will. And, and, but you, you have to sit at the feet of Christ. That's why that verse is so amazing in Deuteronomy 33. It's speaking of Jehovah coming, the law, the, to coming to judge the world with the 10,000 saints. And, and by the way, just put that together with Revelation 19. Revelation 19, and we find... Um, judgment Day is in view. Christ is coming to judge and make war. And, and then notice in verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So, so God is making a point, and he's emphasizing it, highlighting it, you know, like taking that yellow highlighter when you want to remember something, you want something to stand out, and when we do our Bible study, well, this is basically God, um, you know, just to use that figure, highlighting the Word of God in the day of judgment. Christ is coming to judge. What's his name? The Word of God. Look what follows in verse 14. And the armies which were, were in heaven followed him upon white horses, Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. As soon as you see fine linen, white and clean, you know it's the saints. Actually, we don't have to go far. Revelation 19, verse 8, speaking of the bride, who is the same as the saints, pointing to the elect. Revelation 19, verse 8, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. What are, are these horsemen? What, what is, are these men uh, upon horses who are, who are following the word of God? What are they clothed with? It, it says, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. They're the saints. They're the saints following the word into the battle of judgment day. Now, what are you doing, dear saint? What are you doing as... And what am I doing? What are we doing when we come to the Bible and we hear these things and we learn these things? May 21, 2011, Judgment Day begins. And, and how do we know that? From the Word of God. And, and then spiritual judgment, prolonged judgment. How do we know these things? From the Word of God, from the revelation of His righteous judgment program. And, and these things are the testimony of Christ, which is believed in that day. Um, don't want to get too in, uh, you know, tangled up going here and there, but 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 speaks of Christ coming. Verse 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. And, uh, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, and who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Now, verse 10, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Well, what's in that day referring to? In flaming fire. He's coming to punish. That's the context. It's judgment day. And, and, and I mean, do you see these links? Do you see these tie-ins? Or, or am I the only one who sees these things? I, well, if it, I am the only one who sees these things, I, I still have to thank God. Uh, I would, uh, you know, be sad that others are not seeing them, but I know I'm not the only one. I know there are others, and they too are seeing these things. The testimony believed in that day. Why is it a matter? Wh why would the Lord say that? Why would the Lord point that out? If it were not our present situation, if it were not 
our our present situation of being alive on the earth to go through the judgment and at the time that the the lord is opening the scriptures to reveal various aspects of that judgment and as he reveals these things that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ and and so forth the the elect the saints believe them because we're following the word the word is leading us into the battle of judgment day or we could go to second chronicles 20 which is a historical account true history yet it's a historical parable that is describing judgment day and it's not just me saying that compare second chronicles 20 with joel chapter 3 valley of jehoshaphat and in joel 3 there jehovah sits to judge all the heathen it's judgment day here and here is the chapter where um, this great enemy army is approaching and and a prophet rises up uh, do not fear uh, you have no need to fight in this battle jehovah will fight for you and and so jehovah does fight for judah just as he's fighting for us his saints today and he fights by having the enemy army destroy itself and just take a look out your window at the world and what do you see the world destroying itself and and it's the world that is the enemy of god all the nations all the unsaved inhabitants of the earth are set against him and and god is having them destroy one another but there's also something else that's said here um, we we read in Second Chronicles 20, um, it says in, um, let's see, Second Chronicles 20, uh, in, in verse 17, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of Jehovah with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For Jehovah will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face uh, and to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before Jehovah, worshiping Jehovah, and the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and, and of the children of the Korhites stood up to praise Jehovah, God of Israel, with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in Jehovah your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. Believe Jehovah in the day of judgment. Believe his prophets in the day of judgment. No, not me. Not me. Check me out. Yeah, make sure you do. It, it, it's your duty. Um, you know, my duty is to study to teach, and the duty of a listener is to study to receive the teaching. But when I go to Second Chronicles, that's a prophet. The, the Lord moved the prophet to write Second Chronicles. When we went to Second Thessalonians 1, they were words of a prophet. When we went to Revelation 19, they were words of a prophet. When we went to Deuteronomy, that's the words of the prophet. When we went to Jude, that that um, that Enoch prophesied, uh, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. That's the words of Jude the prophet as well as Enoch the prophet. So believe the prophets. Believe the confirmation of the word of God when Scripture is compared with Scripture and arriving at a conclusion, believe the conclusion, because you might be hearing my voice, as, as we read last time in Mark 13, um, you know, what, what God reveals in that hour, speak ye, but, he says, it is not ye that speak, 
but the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost speaks, when you compare spiritual with spiritual, the Holy Ghost teaches, and you need to speak to teach. Well, um, Enoch, Enoch was... Um, he, he, he was declaring, he was prophesying the end of all things. The end of all things. At, at about, well, I guess we'd say, uh, let's see, 70, 7106 uh, to 1994, 9100 years, you know, 9,000 9, plus years before the end came, he was declaring Christ is coming with 10,000 of his saints. And, and, you know, how foolish, how foolish so-called Christians are. Don't look into these things. Don't, don't fear monger. Don't get people to think about Christ coming. And uh, they don't understand the Bible. Anybody that says that doesn't understand the Bible. God has been proclaiming his gospel since the beginning of the world. And he's been moving his prophets to proclaim these things down through history. It just so happens that here we are, we, uh, blessed in certain ways, greatly blessed really as far as the scriptures, and, and not only do we have the whole Bible, but we have the revelation uh, that the Lord is bringing forth at the time of the end as he's unsealed the things um, previously sealed up and, and is revealing them to the understanding of uh, the mind's eye of his people. And, and we, we have these great blessings and we have come, we have come to the end. This is the end of the world. Uh, exclamation point. Put a hundred exclamation points on that. When you see an apostate church everywhere in the world, Jesus said that's a sign of the end. When you see iniquity abounding across the face of the earth, that's a sign of the end. And if you don't see the iniquity that's been abounding over these last several decades and, and is, is just blanketed the earth in, in a filth unimaginable, then you don't have any eyes to see. Not only are you blind, but you're wearing blinders and uh, you know anything else you can think of that, that indicates a lack of sight because it is very obvious, it's even obvious to the ungodly, to the wicked of the earth, they see the wickedness, they see the insanity, they see the chaotic madness, they see all these things and they're troubled, they're disturbed, because the earth is passing away. We are there, right there at the end of all things, and, and it's at this time relatively recently, yes, um, you know, back in the Great Tribulation, the Lord began revealing biblical calendar of history, the timeline of history, judgment on the church. It matches, certainly matches. Look at, look at the just wickedness of the church, the apostasy of the church, unimaginable. And uh, yes, yes, I can see why God would do that. And, and then transition, judgment on the world, May 21, 2011. Certainly fitting, isn't it? Certainly fitting when men are marrying men, and men don't even know they're men, and women don't know they're women, and, and just everything is falling apart. The fabric of human society is shredded. It, it, it is deteriorated uh, beyond recognition. If you would take anyone, anyone, go back in history and take men, uh, you know, in the so-called dark ages and bring them to this day. And, and open up their eyes, and they'll want to run back as fast as possible, and, and screaming probably. What madness! Uh, there, there has never been such a civilization, such a world as this, and that's because there's never been an end before. And so we're there, and, and God has revealed a timeline. And then for someone, so-called people... Uh, or, or, or people, you know, I don't, I don't mean to, um, it, it, it's just that, uh, it, I don't care how long you've been studying the Bible, 50 years or whatever, 50 years or 100 years, if that were possible, and, and, and to not see 
these things, to not grasp where we are in time? Uh, I don't know. It, it's just a terrible thing, a sorrowful thing. And, and yet we know we're living at the time where God is just not giving eyes to see. And those who seemingly once had understanding or spiritual sight, if they were never saved, the Lord is taking that away at this time. And that's, that's where, you know, the, the sadness comes in. But for God's people, we, we see we see the, the scriptures I, I just ran through. You can see the thread. You can see the connection. You can see the, the teaching that, that Christ comes with his saints. Well, um, uh, we're, we're out of time uh, for this study. Lord willing, when we get together in our next Bible study, we're going to look a little bit more at uh, Christ coming with his saints, because that's what Enoch prophesied. And then we'll um, find, you know, we'll complete our study of Enoch by looking at his name and uh, also seeing how that may fit in with the house of God and the completion of the house of God. Thank you for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies and information, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. Until our next Bible study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.